How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel and welcome to my review of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. The juice is loose. The film tells the story of the Deeds family that returns home to Winter River after a family tragedy. Lydia's life is turned upside down where her teenage daughter Astrid, played by Jenna Ortega, accidentally opens the portal to the afterlife. Now this has been a sequel that is long overdue. If you are a fan of of the original film you have been waiting for this movie probably longer than i have because i just recently saw the original for the very first time a couple of days ago and i had a lot of fun with that movie it made me super excited for beetlejuice beetlejuice being able to step back into this world and just see everything shine is something that if you're a fan of the original beetlejuice you're going to enjoy it times 10 because not only do we step back into this world and Keaton stepping back in the shoes of Beetlejuice but we get to expand the world a little bit further than we did in the original film because we saw bits and pieces in that original film that had me really interested and really excited to see what we were going to be getting with Beetlejuice Beetlejuice and seeing just how far they are able to expand the world it brought me back to that world and it almost made me want to stay in that world a little bit longer because when you're thrown into different places all at the same time you get to see different things here and there just the way that some of these ghosts and ghouls look were just absolutely fantastic they absolutely amped up the budget that they had in the original film because that movie was made at a time where movies like that weren't being made so seeing what we got in the original movie and seeing what we got in the sequel just amped it up a little bit more for me from the moment that the movie begins those that grew up with the original film will be thrown into this world immediately and you will have that nostalgic feel as soon as the opening credits begin winona ryder steps back in as lydia and she does not miss a beat just like michael keaton as beetlejuice and Catherine o'hara as her mom they step into these shoes just magically and it almost feels like decades have not passed because they are able to comfortably just move with the story and i think that is going to be very pleasing for a lot of the fans a lot of the macabre humor in here is amped up a little bit more you're able to see different ghosts and ghouls and you're able to see all the creative designs and that's something that i wanted to see going into this movie what tim burton was able to do with that original movie was add his own creative spin to it because he, you can kind of see his fingerprints all over that movie but at the same time he knew how to make that movie feel fresh and unique at that time so seeing if he was able to recreate that magic in here he definitely does because he adds a little bit more to the lore he adds he expands on the world so that way if we do get a third Beetlejuice movie then we're able to expand that movie a little bit further than we did in this movie every little detail in here was matched to perfection and fans of the original movie are going to be very pleased with all of the different designs that we get in this movie story wise this movie doesn't hold up a candle to the original movie but even though everybody steps into those shoes perfectly the story in here is bouncing from one direction to another and at times it does get to be a little bit bloated and a little bit all over the place because you have different storylines going on at the same time. You have Lydia who is dealing with the passing of her father and having an estranged daughter played by Jenna Ortega. Then you have another subplot with Astrid and her love interest that she gets in this movie. Then you also have Monica Belushi thrown in here at the same time. So you have a lot of moving pieces going on in here and at times it feels like it doesn't know which direction it wants to go into because there are so many clashing tones in here that it begins to be a lot some of the characters in here are a little bit too cartoony for my taste especially when it came down to willem dafoe's character because there are moments in here where you kind of have that johnny depp matt hatter feel thrown in here and at times it does get a little bit over the top and that is where you feel tim burton's fingerprints and character designs then you have Astrid who is the moody daughter and I'm at that point where that trope is starting to get a little bit over redundant I'm kind of sick and tired 
own that trope because it's used so much as a plot mechanism that for me it makes the character unlikable which is kind of a darn shame because Jenna Ortega does a fantastic job playing that character it just they made her this cliched character that we've seen in many movies at the same time while also trying to feel like she's still tapping into her Wednesday roots and she did a great job with the material that she is given there are some fantastic moments with her and you kind of get to know where she is in her point in life what kind of things she's been dealing with but at the same time it's something that kind of pulled my chain a little bit even with the, the chemistry that she has with her love interest was not there and that character quite frankly didn't really need to be used in here because he comes and goes and you really don't give a shit about this character he's just there to move the plot forward and you could have removed him from the plot and maybe the movie would have flown a little bit better it's about 10 minutes longer than the original film but you can kind of start feeling the pacing a little bit more we're jumbling a lot of story threads at the same time so it's hard to connect to just one storyline but i also think that there is a good amount of heart in here that carries on over from the original film and thrown in here in ways that i was not expecting them to throw that kind of heart in here some of the humor in here worked for me other times it fell completely flat but just stepping back into this world and just being able to hang out with these characters is exactly what you want especially if you are a fan of the original film you're going to feel right at home you're going to enjoy every single moment because nobody in here feels like they ever skipped the beat. It feels like we just went from the original film in 1988 to current time without missing a beat. And that is something that I really enjoyed about this movie. It's fun. It's enjoyable. If you're a fan of the original movie, you're going to have so much more fun than people that haven't seen the original. And if you're somebody that hasn't seen the original, then you're not going to miss a beat because they fill you in immediately and you're going to get all caught up and you're just going to enjoy this movie even if you miss a lot of the easter eggs and nuance that you would have that you wouldn't have missed if you have seen the original film. But overall, I'm going to go ahead and give Beetlejuice Beetlejuice a 7 out of 10. I really enjoyed this movie. It's a lot of fun. You're going to feel right at home if you have been wanting to see this movie. But those are my thoughts on Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. Are you guys excited to see this movie? Are you planning on checking this film out? Go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys for the next review.